Okay, go. Cool. Yeah, so how do you feel about that when the scorecard was being read? Were you thinking that the uh, Irish fan base would sway the judges? That's what I thought at first because um, I know for the whole fight, um, he was trying to take me down. I know he wanted to strike with me. My problem was I didn't want to commit by so much of my striking because I know if I can overcommit, he has a good, he has a good, take, good, good takedown on So my whole job was to stop that takedown, and I think I did. And I'm the one who got the takedown, so I don't understand the decision, but you know, I got the victory, I'm happy about it. Do you have the hiccups right now? Yeah, it's all the excitement and everything, so I got the hiccups, so sorry guys, with throwing hands, you're going to hear me hiccuping, so you can make jokes and everything, make me feel better. It seemed like a, kind of a frustrating fight at times. Is, it, is he a frustrating guy to fight? He, he is. It's not, he's not really, um, he's not bad at anything. He's good at everywhere, but the thing is, he's persistent, and he keeps going, he grinds you. Um, if you don't, if you overcommit to something, he will take you down. And he's wait, waiting for you. He's waiting for you to overcommit to something. He'll do a hard jab um, or, a, or a hard overhand to make me commit to something. And I was like, I knew better from my experience. I knew if I commit to anything, he's going to take me down. So I just wanted to stop the takedown and lay my punches. And I think I, I did that. Well, it seems like, uh, especially for you, it felt like kind of a must win in this situation. And then to go into a close fight against a guy who has a weird knack for winning close fights that people don't necessarily think he needs to win, were you nervous there about the, the your climate for you and the, the kind of fight it had been? Dude, I was very much nervous. nervous. With the decision, because at the, at the end of 10 seconds of the third round, you see me, I try, I went, went for it. I was trying to knock him out because like, this is 10 seconds, I'm going to go for it. But um, because how talented he is of taking guy, guys and smothering them, I didn't want that situation. I did not want to get taken down by him. Get him on top of you, you're not getting, you're not getting him off. <laughs> So that was my whole strategy. Now, when you come into a fight like this, you know, on a little bit of a losing streak, what have you been doing in your camp? Did, did you change things up, try new things to try to, you know, sort of change everything around? You know what I mean? Because certainly something must not have been worked. Actually, I switched camps. I was with Y Crew for my whole UFC career, and my last fight in Boston, when I got knocked out. Um, so I started to join everyone with, with that camp and I, and ties, and I signed up with Sikitong, um, the best camp in Boston, where Mark Thurgood, Cardi, and his reputation speaks for itself. So, so that's what I went to. I went to the list. I need help. You know, I don't want to lose. He lose my career in UFC, so what he did is um, he's like, all right, he took me under his wing, and you know he helped me for my fight, and obviously you know I got, got the victory, so it was working. Did you feel that he sort of undid bad habits you had, or what were the adjustments that he was able to make that you couldn't get at your old camp? He did uh, some bad habits, and I still got a lot of bad habits, but like, he adjusted. My problem is, it's like I'm a power hitter. I don't really, I don't really let my hands go, because right, like, I'm tentative. And um, he knows that. So he, he fixed some bad habits. I was able to do a lot more com combos in this fight, which is surprising, but everybody knows I, I hit with power. But he fixed that. I still have the power, but now I'm hitting more. So, I mean, I get to get display my full skill this fight because this is this was a must-win fight. But like he said, he said he got me at 60% when he want me. So he said with me, he just scratched the surface. So it's going to be a brand new doomsday next, next camp. Camp around with um, Mark Delgado. So this fight go as you expected it because, like you said, he's a tricky fighter to deal with. But as the rounds progress, is this kind of the way you envisioned it? Um, yeah, I kind of. I know he's gonna try to take down. I, I knew he didn't want to stand with me so much because I know he knew about my power. But it was basically a whole match of grappling versus striker. You know, I'm trying to stop the takedown. He stops. Trying, he's not trying to get hit. So that's what it was. And everybody. Everybody was like, how can you let loose, let loose? I'm like, if I let loose too much, we'll commit. I'm going to take it down. And the whole fight, as we try to did, and the whole fight, I just stopped his takedown. I stopped his takedown. And he's really talented at taking people down. Was there a time that you wanted to let loose, though, that you thought about? It was, it was like, a you know, few times. It was a few times I wanted to let loose. And when I caught him, I still I wanted to let loose. But I know uh, when you stumble him and he's loose and you go real hard, that's when he takes you down. You know, when you think he wobbly, then he takes you down. So I had to be really smart. I had to use my experience and uh, not be over emotional. There's a few times I want to like land in. You see what's coming, coming, what's going in. I was like, oh, no, let me be, be smart because I know the takedowns right there. And the whole time I was just waiting for it. So, like you were pushing forward to have an and that's when you went to the team camp. Yeah. And how close was that when you first tap? It looked like it was maybe just a single tap, maybe you just put your hand there and yeah, because I put my, I put my, it's just I barely stopped it. The whole, the whole, the whole point of the game is to stop his takedown. We know if we stop his takedown, we get frustrated. And we know he's gonna try to strike with me, but his striking is not the same level as mine. It shows the fight. 
he's also pretty smart on his Irish fans. Uh, Irish fans or from, yeah, breakfast or something like that when he was walking past you were recording a group of Irish people at a table next to What was that about? Um, they, 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 they'll find the like, yo, even though we're from Ireland, um, we still support you. And uh, it, it was cool, even though a lot of Irish support. There's a few Irish fans that supported me, so I, I felt really good. So I had to record the show proof of that. You know, it was awesome. It was an awesome experience. What do you think about your Reebok gear? Love it. I I, I love it. People, a lot of fans, people have been talking trash about it. I absolutely love it. The number one reason why I love it because my name is on it. My name is on it. It's like UFC is no longer just a venue where it's just a regular venue. UFC is not an NBA, an NFL, you know, um, I mean, baseball. It's, it's, we are that now. We're just not some, you know, some venue with just uh, produce fighters. We are professional athletes like them. And then with the gear like this, with our own name on it, we can start selling them, you know, own jerseys. That's awesome. So it, it's, it's an honor to be recognized like that. How does the, the money compare to what you were making off sponsors before? Uh, um, for me, because I'm not a mid-tier fighter, it's the same. Um, the, it's not, a, 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 I don't necessarily lose money or make money. It's, it's, la it's exactly in, in the middle. So I might, it's just like a few grand difference for me. But because I'm a mid-tier fighter, it, it's the same. I, I didn't suffer from um, any money um, loss. In the <laughs> What's it like for you to change gym? Because if any of us go from gym A to gym B, we're just regular people. What's it like for you? Do you have to get to know all your teammates right away and find out who's spazzing and who's going to try to take your head off to prove a point? Well, it's exactly like that. When you go to a new gym, especially a uh, big name as I, as I have, you don't know who's going to take your head, head off. You don't know who's out to gun you. But Sigaton, it really, they open me with a work arms like a, like a family, like a, like a new brother to the gym. And they were real nice to me. Mark, uh, a lot of respect to my Dur Durgado. I mean, he did a lot for me. He helped me with open arms, and he, he took me through the, the ropes, and he treated me like one of his own. So I'm really proud um, to represent that gym. You know, it's an honor. It's a real honor for me to represent his gym. When he came forward basically trying to dogfight, and you were getting in short punches, were you surprised he continued? Like, he'd just hold one arm, and you kept trying to land. Yeah. Were you surprised he kept trying and didn't just back away? I was surprised. Um, he. Actually, he has a pretty good chin. I kind of went to a few clean, solid punches, and he was still up, so I was really shocked. Um, but what I'm really shocked is his clinch. He's really strong in the clinch. He was able to push me against the cage. I mean, I was able to turn him around a few times. He was really, really strong, and that's why I couldn't open up so much, because I don't want to open up, and, you know, and let the acid build up my arms. I don't have the strength to um, push him off me, but... He's real strong. I honestly think he, he's going to go far. He has a lot to learn because he's still doing the game. But my honest opinion is he's going to be one of those names that you hear about the, what the divisions are. And probably one day um, he'd be like a uh, title contender. Uh, we're, we're probably going to fight each other again. I'm pretty sure we are. But by, by, by then, it'd be harder. But actually, not, let me take that back. Actually, because we just talk and we're probably going to train together. I'm trying to, that's how good he is. I'm trying to make him my training partner. So that speaks for itself. I mean, we talked, he might start training stick to the tone. So if I could get that, it'd be a blessing to me. And you're fighting Boston. Was it different because you're fighting in your hometown? Because you have a little bit of, you know, people I grew up with are watching this fight. Is it more relaxed here than it was fighting there? It's a lot more relaxed fighting in Vegas because in Boston, like, Boston is a small city. You know, like, everybody knows everybody. Like, literally, everybody knows everybody. And everybody was there for me. And you know, when I fought in Boston, how all that pressure on me, I mean, Boston Herald put me in the front cover. And it was so much pressure. And to lose like that, that was like the most heartbreaking thing. But coming to Vegas, you know, I'm still pretty popular, but it's, it's not the same pressure. When your home people, you know, your mother, your dad, cousins, family are watching you, that's pressure. But here, you know, it's, it's, it's just a fight city, and the pressure was the same, so it was more relaxed coming to Vegas. Not to touch on anything bad, but how do you recover from that? Like, right away, next day, do you just go to the gym and wipe the slate clean, or take a day or two to figure things out? Or how do you get back on track from there? You want the honest truth? Sure. You cry. You cry out. Um, you deal with your emotions. You look in the mirror. You ask yourself you want to do it again. And you pick yourself up and then you go do it again. But that's the most honest answer. This is out. I want to tough it out. I straight cried. I cried like a little girl. And I'm not ashamed of it. But letting that emotion out and looking in the mirror and say, can I fight again? Got me back here, you know, to, to try again. And look, I got the victory. So that's what it takes. Sometimes it takes a loss to realize you do something wrong to get better or something.